Hello, hello, guys, and welcome to our podcast.、Uh, I'm Lisa, and I'm Sarah, and we are two sisters who love watching movies and talking about movies, and just hanging out and chatting about our favorite parts of movies. So we're really excited to have you here today. We are actually、um, for this podcast talking about、uh, a Hitchcock film,、uh, and it was made in 1945, and the name is Spellbound. Don't forget this man. He has plenty to do with the terrifying mystery that causes this glamorous woman to risk her life and reputation in a reckless experiment. A woman who, because of her consuming love for this man, gambles everything to unlock the fearful secret in his heart. What insidious meaning did he read into the markings on a tablecloth? Why, even when he held his sweetheart in his arms, did he gaze in fear at the dark lines of her robe? Spellbound is a psychological thriller、uh, made by Hitchcock and produced by Selznick. Spellbound stars Ingrid Bergman and Gregory Peck, and Ingrid Bergman plays a a doctor, a therapist of,、uh, I guess they called it then psychoanalysis. And so her name, doctor, she is Doctor Constance, and she falls in love with. Um, the new owner of the hospital where she works at, but it turns out that this new owner, Doctor Edwards, he is not who he appears to be, and so the movie turns into a mystery of what happened to Doctor Edwards.、Uh, what is the, this this person who is assuming the identity of Doctor Edwards?、Um, who is that person, and did? He possibly murder Doctor Edwards, so Constance, what no? Ingrid Bergman and Gregory Peck are kind of on the run, trying to remember、uh, what happened to this man who has amnesia, and、um, yeah, and figure out what happened to the real Doctor Edwards. <laughs> That sounded a little complicated. <laughs> It's, okay. It's a complicated a little... situation. Yeah, It's yeah. A complicated it is.、Story. It is. And、yeah, yeah. <laughs> and、uh, my favorite part of this movie is Gregory Peck because I just love Gregory Peck, and I was a pleasant surprise for me. I, I actually didn't look up who was in the film. I knew Ingrid Bergman was in the film, but、um, when he showed up, I was like, "Oh, look who's、yeah. here!" I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah. <laughs> so this guy,、um, who,、uh, yeah, so this guy is a this actor is pretty big. He's he made tons of films. And、um, he's usually more of the like nice guy. Well, actually, in this one, he was still a nice guy, wasn't he? Yeah.、Um, well, I, I feel like have I ever seen him be a bad guy? Gregory Peck is a bad guy. No. I, I he, yeah. I was surprised how、uh, he looked so young in this movie. Like, I guess I'm、mm-hmm. old, used to just seeing him older,、mm-hmm. and like、uh, you always see clips of、mm-hmm. him in, in To Kill a Mockingbird, and、mm-hmm. uh, so seeing him very young, very thin, very. I was like, "Wow, he's tall." <laughs> yeah, he's very tall. <laughs> very, very tall. And、uh, yeah, so what? What? What's your favorite my, part of this movie, Sarah?、Uh, okay,、us. my favorite part is、uh, I love. I'm just really digging how、uh, Hitchcock blends fear and romance together. So、mm-hmm. we were we were talking about Rebecca last week and how the. The romance between those characters feels like a little rocky, but here I found myself very much rooting for、uh, for the romance. But also, you're、mm-hmm. constantly in fear of like, oh no, did he murder someone? I don't know.、Mm-hmm. So you're scared. You have that feeling again, like there's something, something in the corner, something's about to tap your shoulder, all that suspense. But anyway, so Hitchcock makes me feel uncomfortable the whole time, but in a good way. So that. <laughs> Uh, that is Hitchcock.、Huh? That is how Hitchcock. That is how、goes. he does <laughs> all his films. Yeah.、Um, yeah. No, I I also really love the 
I love the reveal in the ending. Uh, it's, it's not an ending. It's not what I expected. And uh, for me, I really loved Ingrid Bergman's uh, performance in it. She's really mm-hmm. good. Oh, yeah. She's I think, good. yeah, most people, if, if they haven't seen a whole lot of classic movies, they'll probably be able to recognize her uh, from Casablanca. And mm-hmm. that's how you can oh, yeah. keep her in mind. Yeah. <laughs> easy way to remember. It's, it's easy. Yeah. Okay, so I can talk a little bit about uh, some of the history or the making of the movie. Um, yeah, so Spellbound is based on uh, a novel called The House of Dr. Edwards. Uh, that came out in 1927. It was written by John Palmer and Hilary A. Saunders, but they wrote this under the, the pseudonym Francis Beating. I guess... Francis Beaning sounds like it might sell more or something. But anyway, so we have the novel uh, House of Dr. Edwards. The movie is kind of loosely adapted on the book. There's similar characters. There's the same concept of like a, a patient assuming his psychiatrist's identity. Um, so, so yeah, so, it, in, so the 1945 movie, as I mentioned, was produced by Selznick and directed by Hitchcock. And so at the time, Selznick wanted to do uh, a movie about psychoanalysis. He was very interested in it because he had his own positive experiences with it. He was undergoing therapy at the time. And uh, at the time, psychoanalysis was kind of becoming a part of American lives because of the war. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure in other countries as well. Soldiers returning home sadly with shell shock and so so yeah so so there was interest in psychoanalysis at the time yeah so Selznick brought his own therapist on as a consultant for the film and this is Hitchcock and Selznick's second production uh, together after Rebecca Uh, there's some radio adaptations uh, Lux Radio in 1948 and then Hallmark Playhouse and Adapted for television, NBC's Theater 62 program in 1962. So the film was nominated for six Academy Awards, and it won original score. It's the only Oscar that it won, even though it was nominated for Mm -hmm. for six. And um, the soundtrack has been uh, re-recorded by, I think it's Entrada Records. Uh, The entire soundtrack, you you can listen to it. And... The soundtrack was composed by Miklos Rosa, if that's how you say his name. He's a Hungarian-American composer who composed tons of movies. Uh, I have the list. Hold on. Yeah, he's got Double Indemnity, The Last Weekend, Ben-Hur, Quo Vadis, Ivanhoe, a lot of movies. So he's a big-time composer. And yeah, in this movie, uh, he he used a theremin, which is the, the spooky sound. That you hear the oh. woo, not the yeah, we talked yeah. about the there's another sound that can sound spooky which is the nova chord but that sounds a little bit more like an old organ but the theremin is mm-hmm. very recognizable sound mm-hmm. but uh yeah that's used all the yeah, time yeah yeah i just feel like maybe that's that's when it, it was starting to be popularized so mm-hmm. um yeah hitchcock's wife worked on the treatment of the novel uh, but then credit was credit for the adaptation was later given to Angus MacPhail, and I, I bring up Hitchcock's wife just because his wife uh, Alma Alma Reveal did she not take his name <laughs> or okay, it was yeah. Alma Reveal Hitchcock? I was gonna look her up real quick. Let me see. I see Alma Lady Hitchcock. I see that as a nickname for her. Uh, no, but uh, Alma Reville, I bring her up because she did work on a lot of uh, Hitchcock movies. And so I sh- she's an underrated collaborator. Very important woman. <laughs> okay. Alma Reville. Yeah. Spellbound was filmed in Utah, Vermont, and L.A. <laughs> and uh, the for the ski scenes, yeah, it was filmed... At Alta Lodge and Was- Wasatch Lodge. And it's a ski resort where they do not allow snowboarding. <laughs> oh, no snowboarding. Why not? I don't know. What's up with that? I don't up know. With that? 
Uh, several drafts of the screenplay were submitted to the production code office, which is the they're in charge of the Hayes Code. And so, yeah, the screenplay had to be heavily uh, censored. But surprisingly, that very, very last scene is is very violent. But that was allowed mm-hmm. to stay. Selznick was able mm-hmm. to prove that um, the, the the actions were taken by a unsound character. Um, but pe- personally, so I was curious about the name Spellbound. Like, how why is it called Spellbound? Or how they came up with it. And I found some uh, other names for the movie when they were when they were trying to come up with a name. Of course, there's the House of Doctor Edwards, which is the name of the book. They have uh, also the Interloper, and then hid yeah Interloper. I don't know. That's a bad name. <laughs> what is that? Right. I'm glad they didn't choose that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, Hitchcock thought of Hidden Impulse. Um, Hidden yeah. oh. And mm. after that, then a studio secretary named Ruth Rickman thought of Spellbound. And they went with Spellbound because it tested the best. Um, yeah. Yeah, so the entire movie was shot in black and white, except for two frames. I'm curious if you noticed, Lisa. Mm-hmm. Did you notice that? You mean at the end? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't notice it until I was reading about the movie. And what's fascinating? You didn't notice the color? No, because it was so oh. fast. It was so fast because oh. literally it was two painted frames. So um, mm-hmm. it's funny because um, when when I was reading up about the what was it? No, I I, I watched a, a little behind the scenes uh, documentary uh, on the making of Spell, Spellbound, and. Um, they were quoting Hitchcock mentioned that they they asked him will the viewers notice the two frames of of red in the ending mm-hmm. and he said that uh, n- they won't notice it they will feel it and so I think I mm. fell into that category where I felt it. <laughs> oh. I'm just I would just he got me he got me he got you. <laughs> I mean, I felt it and I saw it. It was like, oh my god. <laughs> okay, you're smart then. <laughs> <laughs> no, but <laughs> I don't know. It's just I saw the red and I was like, oh, it was like, so I, fast I just, though. I like just I, saw it. it was fast. Yeah, my body just and my I don't know just internalized it, but didn't think about it. But that's really cool. Anyway, that is the end of the history and the fun facts. Mm. <laughs> facts. All right. So the story. Um, so we have, we, talk, we talked about um, in general what it's about, but there are pieces that I think are very interesting that Sarah and I would like to dig into. And so uh, the beginning of the film starts in an institute where Dr. Constance works um, as, uh, what, what do they call in the film? Psychoanalysts. Psychoanalysts. Yeah. So, so it's, and yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. No, it's because yeah. so, they call it. It's so interesting. They call it psychoanalyst. So then, going into the the, the movie, then I'm I'm not thinking like oh therapy or just because you don't mm-hmm. hear that name, or maybe you hear it when you study psychiatry. But uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So in this in this film, they're called psychoanalysts, and uh, there is a woman named uh, Const, Doctor Constance, and. Uh, she is, that's Ingrid Bergman, and she works with a lot of guys in this institute to uh, help these people that uh, have a, a internal trauma, mostly I would say childhood, that the focus is ch- something happened in their childhood and therefore they have um, trauma that they need to have people kind of come, come to uh, terms with. Maybe it's hidden deep down in their psyche and they can't, they can't process it and they want them to process it and then get healed so basically I thought it was (laughs) the patients in that institute are very beautiful (laughs) I felt (laughs) and I guess maybe they just so they it's kind of the film they don't want to like portray because I I would think yeah I mean maybe it's just a higher end institute or something but maybe I, I was trying to wonder I was trying to think about if if Hitchcock just wanted them to like speed i don't know maybe that added to the mystery but maybe because they just focused on that one that one patient that was very beautiful and and didn't like men maybe it's just um kind of that added to the 
you know, kind of sexy, mysterious kind of vibe. I don't know, because I feel like that's a, that's a, what it, it, what's introduced in the film. Like you have this very like dolled up um, chick that, that hates men. And so anyways, um, so anyways, they were very beautiful, but um, um, yeah, so Constance, um, who was also very beautiful because <laughs> Ingrid Bergman is just beautiful. She's uh, very so, pretty. <laughs> she's very pretty. Uh, and yeah, all those other guys that work there are not that beautiful. And I, I mean, I was... I, I, this was, is so I insightful, bit, Lisa. This is very <laughs> insightful. No, no, it's great. Continue. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, this, this the guys... Um, I, I don't know. For me, it was a bit it was a bit much like they're all hit. I feel like, well, one guy in particular was like hitting on her constantly and she's like just taking it like, oh, yeah, silly, like taking like silly gut men just like coming in and she didn't take it too seriously. Um, but I thought it was like kind of intense. But I, I mean, it's, it's it's she's this beautiful psychiatrist with all these other guys there. Um, and then uh, Dr. Ed- Edwards, right? Dr. Yeah. Edwards. Yeah. Dr. He Edwards, comes yeah. in and of course he matches. Ingrid there Bergman um, and Gregory, because it's Gregory Peck. And Gregory Peck is very <laughs> handsome. So all the other guys just didn't have a chance um, because this guy just comes in, the new owner of the place, and uh, that's really what um, kind of sparks the, the... They're instantly like they like each other and kind of sparks the whole romance portion of the film and the mystery at the same time because that's when... Um, you find out something is up with Miss uh, with Doctor Edwards, right? Like right when they meet up. Um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it was, so you an- yeah, you were talking about. So well, obviously you have to have the the pa- the beautiful patients in in the movies. Um, that's cause you, you, they're very attractive people in movies. That's that's just mm-hmm. a kind of given. But also, yeah. um, <clears throat> I think they're trying to emphasize the, this entire movie. The idea that um, of of because they they say it in the very beginning of the movie with the the opening text how like psychoanalysis can help the the sane mind so they're not trying mm-hmm. to they're just saying kind of for everyone so maybe although I feel like at a you know a psych institute you would have all sorts of people but anyway I feel they might just be trying to emphasize that like hey regular people or or mm-hmm. just like anyone. Cool people still need help. Yeah. Maybe like if you're attractive and cool yeah. or whatever you say. Yeah. yeah. So that, that thought comes to mind that they're trying to open it for everyone. It can help anyone. <clears throat> and, oh, I was going to say, yeah, her, the character's name is Constance, uh, Constance Peterson. So they call her doctor, oh. but it's okay. It's just because okay. it's Dr. Peterson, but then later they reveal her first name is Constance because for me, I got confused a little bit with all, all the doctors' names. But Dr. Constance sounds sounds really cute. And, well, not that cute. It just sounds cool. I don't know. It just sounds cool. But anyway, I'll just clarify cool. they're the same. Dr. Peterson, uh, Dr. Constance, or Constance. Those are all the same person. Ingrid Bergman. In case, Ingrid Constance. Bergman. In case I say someone else's name. or Because I, I wrote down Dr. Peterson. Um, but So, yeah, my first thought when I saw uh, Ingrid Bergman as... Dr. Peterson or Constance. My first thought was like, oh man, I wish Ingrid Bergman was my therapist. <laughs> because then I feel like <laughs> all of my problems she would just be has solved. That, just <laughs> relaxed vibe. Like, I know. It's very soothing. Yeah. But, you know, as as the movie goes along, I, I, start, I start reevaluating that question. Yeah, she's kind of annoying. She's Not kind a- of annoying sometimes. Yeah, she she is. And when she's being a... You know, you know when he's like, like, let's turn off for a moment. She's like, no, we got to dig deeper. Right yeah. Now. And yeah. And she's smiling. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, just give yeah. me some breaks. Cause, yeah, because cause one of my topics that uh, I, I wanted to talk about was, yeah, the relationship between um, uh, Dr. Peterson and Dr. Edwards um, is that it's very much a... <laughs> <laughs> it's like a type of tough love because like she's in they're they're in love she's in love with him but at the same time she's trying to figure out what it is that happened to him and um, mm-hmm. I'm getting a little ahead of myself with the plot here but basically she ends up saying like she ends up exposing him to all of his triggers and says like keep going was it your childhood keep going keep going further and he's like I don't want to and she's <laughs> She's like, she's you just have no choice. Him. <laughs> oh. But anyway, her acting is great. His acting is great. And um, 
yeah so what what ends up happening is after they they fall in love um like instantly fall in love instantly like, it's really instantly. quick yeah like there's there's no yeah. role there's no courting involved it's yeah. just like that scene where she's like walking up the stairs because they had just met and then she's like she sees that the, his light is on because they yeah. all live in the institute together and then the music i'm like oh man like and then she goes <laughs> into his room like oh man <laughs> And then he says, you know what's happening? And I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> and then they just start making out. No, I'm just no, like, no. Okay. No, wait, wait. But they went, they went on one date. I feel like the, the, the okay, love at first light. They, they, at first light. <laughs> well, there, there was a light. So, but, <laughs> no, <laughs> but, but she saw him. She was very intrigued by him. Like, immediately, like, it was, it was, mm-hmm. they were eating at the cafeteria with mm-hmm. all the other doctors. And then later, they do go on a first date. And at least they kind of address that um, that idea of like falling in love right away, because um, Doctor Peterson starts talking about how it's one of my favorite quotes from the movie. She says, uh, "I think the greatest harm done to the human race has been done by poets." And then she goes on and on about how like oh they say love is supposed to feel like this and this and that like all artsy and you mm-hmm. know and then when it actually happens it feels different. And then he's talking, mm-hmm. you know, during the whole movie, they're talking about how Dr. Peterson is just way too, like, logical with her approaches, too much analysis, all of the science stuff. And yet mm-hmm. she, ju- she just falls for him and it has all of a sudden all the logic kind of falls out the window. And uh, so it's really cool that they address those, those two things. So, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty much the beginning piece. Um, it's about them. They instantly fall in love, and then very soon after that, like literally right after that, we find out that Doctor. Uh, see, now I was about to say Doctor Peterson. <laughs> yeah, I uh, know Doctor Edwards. You Doctor say, Edwards. Yeah, Gregory <laughs> Peck. Okay, the main actor. He uh, he has problems. He ha- and we know this because when they first met, she drew some lines on the tablecloth, and he freaked out and like oh, just drawing some lines with her fork, and then he saw lines on her jacket and so and then he freaked out again and then he's realizing you know what like he's he acknowledges that there's something wrong like with me um these white as i think it's white against black lines uh trigger something inside me and uh it's yeah so there there's another patient that ends up getting injured and then dr Dr. Edwards is there with some of all the other doctors and they're trying to help that patient. And Mm -hmm. um, that's when he goes full blown. Like he's, uh, he's having some kind of episode where he's trying to remember something, but he can't, he's he's just very, very disturbed. And um, yeah, then he knows like, they know that something is very wrong (laughs) and they, Mm -hmm. they quickly find out, well, uh, I'll call her Constance. Constance wants to help. Oh, but it's tough John. because the his name's John. John. Well, she finds out his name Constance. is John later. Okay. Okay. So we should, <laughs> there's too many. We keep picking movies let's, with everyone who has different names. Everyone okay. who has different okay. identities. Yeah. Let's just say John and Constance. Okay. Let's just. So okay. Constance, who has fallen in love um, with John, immediately wants to help him uh, and t- try to help him remember what it is that happened to him, and uh, but. You know, very quickly they find out that <clears throat> the real Dr. Edwards is missing. And so Constance and John figure out that John has been taking on the um, the identity of Dr. Edwards. And since the real Dr. Edwards is, is missing, now John is possibly a suspect. So... Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that, and that begins the next piece of our story, which is finding out what, like, who is this, who, who's, who is this man that's taken uh, Dr. Ed- Edwards' place, who's, we know, we know later, he's, his name is John, but um, that is basically the whole uh, middle part of the story. Um, and I think that Constance is a very brave woman, uh, because <laughs> she just immediately just goes, leaves the Institute with this guy. Um, because she just knows that he's innocent. She's just very sure that he hasn't done anything bad, and she wants to find out the truth. And so they just run away together. 
So like you said before, not a very, not a very smart move, but very much a person in love move. Um, so it was, it, yeah, it's a little bit crazy. <laughs> well, yeah, because she has her, she's very, very dedicated to the her psychoanalysis um, Sure, sure. Yeah, her, as good. her career, and she believes in it, and she's in love with him. So she's juggling all those things at once. Probably most importantly, that she loves him. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why she. Right, right, right. Because right. yeah, yeah. But I, th- I think it's. So I had the thought watch while we while I was watching the movie that um, something like this would not happen to, uh, nowadays, like a this type of mistaken identity case because of Uh social media i think everyone would know what you know the real dr edwards looks like like oh here's the new uh well it's not the owner he's he's it's it's supposed to be the new head of the psych institute they would know what he looks like Mm -hmm. (laughs) so anyway so i just think that's interesting (laughs) yeah i mean even in a small community like it sounded like they knew like, they knew each other quite a bit. Like, I feel like someone would have noticed. But, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, nowadays, that just will not happen yeah. because we all know what we look like. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Everyone's got, because, you know, with yeah. his LinkedIn and all that, you know, yeah, people yeah, would yeah. kind of be like, I don't think Dr. Edwards was, was that tall. <laughs> was that tall. <laughs> and that yeah, yeah. <laughs> so- <laughs> Okay, I need to kind of stop. <laughs> Um, oh, no, but but I mean it's realistic in that he's only there at the institute for like a a day or yeah, two, and then immediately like you know, so it was a um, doctor, the real doctor Edwards, uh, his assistant called and then didn't recognize mm-hmm. his voice, and so then mm-hmm. that started the whole thing. But anyway, so they have run away now, Constance and John, and. Yeah, they're trying to figure out what it is that happened to him, trying to remember. Um, he's convinced that he killed Dr. Edwards, uh, but Constance Constance doesn't exactly think that, and she's trying to figure out what it is. She, she, she really thinks it's a guilt complex uh, mm-hmm. from, from the childhood. Yeah, I mean, throughout the film, like, I mean, I mean, it's. I, I was gonna say it happens more in the middle, but I think in the beginning, the same, the same Hitchcock uh, kind of using objects yeah. to kind of like freak you out and noises, and um, I think in the middle of the film, that's used to like kind of be, feel like you're unsure about the situation and if he's actually guilty. Um, what do they they use like knives? Yes. Several times. Well, I think in the beginning they use a knife too. It's like they freak you out with uh, knives. Yeah. Um, and shiny, shiny, glimmering. Uh, just because the glimmer of the knife. I think even the knife that she was opening envelopes with, and I remember her, yeah. she was eating, and, and there was a knife, oh, yeah. the cutting a steak with a knife, Dude, and then him shaving in the knife. Like oh I thought God. that was really, really cool. That's, like, to me, one of the scariest, like, okay, so it's building and building, yeah, with all yeah. of the... That was something that I, I wanted to mention, too, that here, here comes mm-hmm. Hitchcock with his ob- obsession with with things um but it to me i feel like it really builds up to the uh when when constance is is just eating meat with Mm -hmm. and she's cutting it with a knife and fork and i've never seen that well maybe i have in other movies but it was just really scary the way she's cutting the meat immediately i mean like and the way um the way John is just kind of staring at her, and mm-hmm. the camera, er, the camera's like just straight on on Constance, and then it's just it's scary. You just can't yeah, help thinking he of like, a lot. yeah, he stares a lot. He's gonna just yeah, it's a combination of of all of this imagery and the way that uh, poor uh, Gregory Peck is is terrified <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> but scary. I love um, the milk uh, thing. That oh, was yeah, yeah, really yeah. Oh. scary. That was great. As mm-hmm. in, just you just feel so uneasy, so un- uncomfortable. There's danger lurking around the corner, and then that's yeah, that's one of the things that that makes this movie great. And you just s- stay at the. It's like it's you do that thing where where you cover your eyes, but you gotta peek through your fingers because yeah. you have to know what happens, even though it's too too intense. But it's, yeah, it's pretty. It's I don't know. I, I I feel like he's very creative. This guy, um, and every time I watch one of Hitchcock films it's like oh yeah. that's that very interesting way of yeah. uh, 
like making it the just an an item very scary this sitting there or, or with the with the uh, with a shine or with the little scrunchy sound or any of that mm-hmm. uh, so it's pretty cool mm-hmm. and uh, yeah they do that throughout um, when they're on this journey to find out who who this guy is um, that he took, he's lost his memory and uh, I think the milk scene is. With, is it, oh, is it Dr. Bruce? Yeah, it's Bruce? Dr. Brula. Yeah, so they, Brula, when, yeah. when they run away um, to try to uncover John's identity, um, Constance takes them to Dr. Brula, who is uh, Constance, who was Constance's mentor, who is also a psychoanalyst and a doctor. Well, I wanted to mention it really quickly. We were talking about the way things are, are, are framed and very scary uh, once mm-hmm. again, we have the cinematographer George Barnes, so we have to be oh. very thankful and grateful <laughs> for Thank him. The uh, same uh, cinematographer uh, from uh, Rebecca. Rebecca, yes. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, you, George Barnes. <laughs> Thank you, George Barnes. <laughs> um, <laughs> We always I have just have feel like, like spe- we should have a, like a special thanks at the bottom. Uh, yeah, we for should. People who yeah, just yeah. are never mentioned in the film, like are appreciated. <laughs> We have to highlight their name. Yeah, I just feel like the, it's, you know, two of them together, I'm sure, um, came up with a lot of... Anyway, uh, I was talking about... Ooh, we were talking about Dr. Rulov. Yeah, so they visit Dr. Rulov, and they end up analyzing a dream that John ha- had, because mm-hmm. the whole idea is, like, your, your, your dreams are very telling insightful into who you are and what you're thinking about it will uncover mm-hmm. everything the end all be all which is and they, they mention like freud's work throughout the the movie even though i th- i think it's funny that yeah D- dr brulov talks about freud very very highly and even though mm-hmm. uh, he did come up with a lot of the concepts for psychoanalysis and psychiatry at least from what i know he, he came up with with a lot of concepts but i don't think he's i think they've also thrown away some of his concepts <laughs> nowadays yes yeah. I, I don't know if yeah. you've heard anything about it i i know that there are some good in this so there's yeah, some bad yeah, I just, exactly. that's all i know <laughs> it was i i i think it, it, the gist is uh he, he, there was too much like sexual analysis into everything. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Anyway, but it's still, um, still interesting seeing how this also makes the movie a little uh, a product of of its time because it is closer. Freud was. Oh, let me just look. <laughs> Let's talk about Freud. No, I was just briefly. <laughs> I don't. I'm not an expert on any of this. Uh, yeah, he was born 1856, uh, died 1939. So it's like end of late 1800s, I guess, if his concepts are like, you know, coming around or starting and it makes sense. Like mm-hmm. by 1940, if you have um, psychiatrists or psychoanalysts using some of his work. But so, yeah, that's used in, they talk about him in the movie. Oh, I remember this, this the quote specifically. He says something about... Uh, about Freud not being Hue- Huey, but now something that I was thinking to myself, now they consider some of his his work Huey, but not anyway. <laughs> Getting a little distracted. Um, John's dream is this really cool artsy sequence, and that's because um, it was drawn in and designed by the artist Salvador Dali, and mm-hmm. Hitchcock said that his he talked about his reasoning for wanting to use artwork for, by Salvador Deli and he said Hitchcock said I was determined to break with the traditional way of handling dream sequences through a blurred and hazy screen mm-hmm. uh, I asked Selznick if he could get Dali to work with us and he agreed though I think he didn't really understand my reasons for wanting Dali He probably thought I wanted his collaboration for publicity purposes. And then he says, The real reason was that I wanted to convey the dreams with great visual sharpness and clarity, sharper than Mm -hmm. the film itself. I wanted Dolly because of the architectural sharpness of his work. Mm -hmm. 
And the, yeah, it's Dolly. Yeah. <laughs> I could tell when I first saw it. I was like, oh, it's Dolly. Because oh, I, I've, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I've gone to his museum um, oh. in Spain. So Nice. It's, oh, you should talk about it, not me. <laughs> huh? Oh, no, no. I don't know a lot about it. I just can, I could notice when it's him. Nice. Uh, just the, the way he draws uh, just humans, like, and in the skies a lot and the... I don't know. It's just, you take it, yeah, you take objects and you just distort them in a certain way. And it's just, you can kind of see, oh, that's that's a dolly distortion. So when I was looking at, like, when he was on the roof uh, and uh, there was, I think there was a face in the sky. And then he had, like, the wheel that had, like, mm. it was twisted on the side. I'm like, oh, I know that. Like, um, I, I think I remember there was, like, a bicycle that literally looked like that. I think it may, might have been, like, in the front of the museum. Was it? Oh, I don't know. Or maybe it was a car with those wheels. But anyways, all, all of that was like super like you could just notice it was him. Um, so definitely, I think anyone who, who was watching it, because he was such a big name then, they would be like, oh, it's a Salvador Dali. Um, yeah. That, that's great. That's, well, m- me and perhaps other people <laughs> watching might not know. They just might be like, oh, that's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Very <laughs> It's a, it's very different. Hopefully, he's, he's an interesting yeah. guy. Yeah, hopefully now I I I won't unsee it now. Like if I if I see any of his other works, hopefully I'll be able to recognize it. But mm-hmm. but yeah, it's very interesting that they included that in the movie. Um, also, we talked about the dream sequence. Okay, and the milk and the milk. The milk, right? So basically, and so where should we jump to is, now? <laughs> the milk, the scene where he kind of like spaces out and because basically, and they're in Doctor. Brew loves home and uh, he has one of his like spacing out moments where he's like you're not sure if he's aware of what he's doing or if he's like uh, if he's I don't know because uh, there's some sort of like hypnosis going on but he basically has his um, shaving knife and he comes to Dr. Brulov's uh, office and that's when Duke, Dr. Brulov he's like oh like you want to drink a milk or something? And then he just basically <laughs> drugs him. Um, yeah, with and it's the a, milk. It's a really creepy, yeah, it's a creepy scene because because basically you just follow him drinking the milk and the, the cup kind of goes up upwards and then it's like you're kind of, the milk takes over the whole screen. So it's like slowly like, like you're falling into the, it's it's really weird like your fault like you're in the milk or so. <laughs> no, I, I, it, 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 yeah, it, it, it's like you're it ends up or covering something. yeah, yeah end up covering it, the whole screen the whole screen um, is covered in white, and then you know the this character John is established that he has this huge fear of the color white, uh, mm-hmm. like with the white and the the black lines. Um, so so then yeah, so that ends up scaring you because you don't know what's mm-hmm. going to happen, but. But yeah, but but after af- after the the milk scene, uh, they do the the dream analysis, and so af- the the dream analysis ends up taking them to a ski resort, which mm-hmm. is the one where he visited uh, Doctor Edwards briefly before before his disappearance. So they head there, and they will see to see if if that will um, stir his memory. So, yeah, so they go to the ski resort and, you know, like with that, that, that tough love that uh, Constance is trying to oh, push yes, on John, she forces him to ski. Yes, and, ski. you know, even though like, I, I can't remember if, if Brulov, Dr. Brulov knows that they're going to ski, but basically Dr. Brulov is, has been telling her like, this is a bad idea. You're in danger that we don't know who this man is, but you know she's she's hard headed in love and she's got this this idea of I keep I just keep calling it tough love but so she's like we're gonna throw you out there we're gonna go skiing see if it if it stirs or jar, jars your memory and mm-hmm. poor guy like he's he's skiing and it all comes back to him of of this childhood accident of where mm-hmm. he accidentally yeah, yeah 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 and he basically feels guilty for his, his brother's death and um but that guilt has now as 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 constance has been talking about like your childhood and everything she believes that she he is taking this guilt and then projecting it onto the death of of dr edwards who happened to die during uh this this ski resort 
trip. Mm-hmm. But oh man, I just feel so bad okay. for 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 John. Only. Like, can you like this is you can tell that the the psychology is still very early in its steps because yeah. I don't think throwing someone like that's the thing that scares you. Go. I like I don't. Th- yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely true. I was like, these techniques are just a bit a bit much for me. Yeah, because he's just like, he's like, I think this is a bad idea. This is causing me, like, anxiety. And they're just like, no, it doesn't matter. Like, you're supposed to be empathetic, right, if you're yeah. a psychiatrist. And, you're not and, supposed to, like, yeah. Yeah, and you're not supposed to, yeah, because I think, you know, you run the, the risk of, like, re-traumatizing someone again. Mm-hmm. And, like, but anyway, I, I don't know en- enough about, uh, academically, I don't know <laughs> about that <laughs> yeah, um. I, I think i think now it's it's safe to say that when you when you have triggers like i think that it's more of a you kind of you slowly mm-hmm. like kind of open it up very slowly the issue and at the pace that you're comfortable with and uh yeah and this this movie is all about like no that there's no comfort zone like you just have to like we have we got to press yeah. it until you explode, and then you're gonna feel better. So, well, I mean, um, it, yeah, there is like a a, an, a a pending murder case, so they're kind of yeah. in a rush. Um, yeah, that's true. They are in a rush because <laughs> so, the police because are after it, them. That's true. Speaking of the, I did you have anything else to say about the the ski? Uh, oh, the, place? that the whole ski them skiing yeah. was like yeah. I was like, ooh, like, because, well, first of all, obviously you can't ski like that because they're perfectly in sync and they're like <laughs> going down the slope. But it, it was pretty like, he looks at her and she looks at him and he looks at her. Uh, and it was, it, was, it was pretty like, what is he going to do? Is he going to like push her over? Yeah. She's going to fall over. Yeah. Uh, but then I was, I, 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 got, I did get distracted by the fact that like, like they don't even have like, like for their faces, like if they fall uh, over, yeah. they'd be so cold. Like they, oh. they're not dressed properly. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, that that whole scene. I, I mean, it's again his uh, John stare down. Like he's always staring at people in the whole movie. Um, okay. But yeah, uh, you don't but know yeah, what he's but going right to do. Before, right before they fall off the slopes. Yeah, he finally. That's the great reveal. He finds out. Um, I, I am guilt. I feel guilty for my brother's death, and this is why I have my brain is locked away. What happened to the real Doctor Edwards? Um, and uh, what happens after that is it, they think everything is solved, everything's cool, that Dr. Edwards just fell fell off the slopes by himself, but um, it wasn't just that. He had, he had a, a gun wound. So yeah. they're like, it was you, John. You <laughs> shot him. And John's like, yeah, I must have because I keep forgetting things. So, <laughs> so it must have been me. <laughs> yeah, because I thought he had like already accepted that he it wasn't his fault. Yeah. But I think he just thinks that he forgets things. So he must have still done it. Yeah, the, the guilt is just is too much in him. So then he, 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 believes, he believes it. So then... His his Obviously, brain and his body yeah. tells him that he did it. Like he genuinely believes it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, he does. So I, I was talking about the the police have been after them the whole time. Yeah, and <laughs> I love the scene where the police they draw glasses on Ingrid oh, Bergman's yeah. face, like the picture. I'm like, <laughs> oh my so god, fun. that this is so is funny. Like, this is funny. You know what? Now that I think about it, I feel like that was intentionally like supposed to be funny. Because Hitchcock does <laughs> like to, um, you know, include humor here and there. Uh, <laughs> he had a strange sense of humor, but but yeah. So the, that's that's just a, that's a great scene. That, um, that was pretty funny. <laughs> very yeah, Clark where Kent. Put, like I think I recognize this, <laughs> recognize this person. Like let me draw let me draw glasses on her. It's like it is her. <laughs> like whoa, it's her. She's a doctor. <laughs> I can see it now. Um, yeah. So now. John is in jail now, and Constance is trying to get him out. And I, I love the the well when when John and Constance uh, first met and they have like their first kiss and everything. They do that whole the the sequence with like these all these doors opening <laughs> as oh, yeah. soon as they kiss, and so it's like oh okay, we've opened the doors of the mind <laughs> and of the, whatever of everything, and. <laughs> And uh, when John is is locked away, now it's like here's all these there's the jail cell door that's closing and these other mm-hmm. I think they close they show other doors closing too, and yeah that that kind of a montage of that and of of 
Constance trying to get him out of jail. And mm-hmm. anyway, those two was it was a nice con- contrast contrast for yeah, Constance. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I actually I didn't think about that that the doors opening in the beginning and yeah. then all those doors closing when he's being convicted and they're just showing her face and all these doors like and not him at all just like Constance saying don't worry you'll be okay and we're going to get you out and then yeah and then he gets you just see him uh, like a jail cell door closing and stuff so yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool I didn't, didn't notice that yeah the whole that that quote in the beginning of the the, the movie the, in the titles is all about opening the doors of the mind so so mind. now we're at the moment we're like is 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 trying to open the trying to open the doors of the mind is that working or is it not working because now all the doors are literally being closed <laughs> but <Literally>. so <laughs> so um but now now is the the big reveal scene where uh, yes. Constance figures out by so Constance back at the psych institute has a conversation with the previous doctor who the owner or the the head chief doctor of the psych institute Dr. Murchison and Dr. Murchison he has a slip of the tongue <laughs> Mm-hmm. And he says that he never really liked Dr. Edwards. And in this context, he's talking about the real Dr. Edwards. And now Constance, that that completely f- throws the case upside down for her. Because the whole idea was that, like, no one knew that, that, that John... Everyone thought that John was Dr. Edwards in the beginning. The point was, no one knew what he looked like. How did... How did uh, Dr. Murchison know um, the real Dr. Edwards. And so now mm-hmm. she's piecing everything together using bits of the, the the dream that John had that she took notes with. And she confronts Murchison and I forgot how she presents it to him. She, 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 presents, it, she <laughs> presents it as like, oh, I have a dream. I had a patient with a dream and ah. I want you to help interpret it. And so basically, it's John's dream, and they're going through the dream, and he's helping her go one by one logically through the dream, and then somehow he just goes with it, like at the end, when she's like <laughs> analyzing it, and and then he's like just accepts that he knows where this whole anal- analysis is going, and he's like, oh, and in that dream, that person would be me, and I'm and yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I guess you're just gonna like. Just accept it. I mean, he could have just denied it. I mean, I right? Guess, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> he just says, "Yeah, you figured it out." <laughs> it was because like John had a dream about some kind of. The, he was playing like a card game with someone, and the mm-hmm. uh, that person he was playing with was angry at like this prop- proprietor or something. So he, she figures it out that way. That it's like two different owners arguing with each other, and yeah. So she she pieces together that he well no or does he say it he says that he hated Doctor Edwards. Well, I, he says first that it was him. Like he, <laughs> okay, just, he just says, says it. <laughs> he's he's he just says well that has to be me and I'm like yeah. So she doesn't even say it first. He says it. <laughs> Man, he just confesses yeah. without her even saying it was him. Yeah, and then he pulls out the gun. <laughs> yeah, and this is the the end where she says well. If you, ex- if right now, if you um, let yourself get arrested, they're just going to tr- try you for, I guess, I mean, I, her, her argument is that the first murder was out of like a pa- uh, crime of passion. No, but this, it, it was her- the, that, because uh, he had Murchison, Dr. Murchison went on a uh, vacation uh-huh. because of his, um, maybe he had like some kind of, they, can, they thought that he had like a breakdown or something. Like, okay, well, he wasn't so able to work. So, like, if he committed okay. this, if he killed him during this was, vacation, he could plead some type of mentally unstable thing. So okay. that's what she's telling him, that, like, you can get away with this if you don't shoot me. As she yeah. <laughs> walks out the door, and you have that really cool shot with the the gun in the hand, uh, mm-hmm. following and tracking Ingrid Bergman. And that goes back to... Hitchcock's obsession with things. He has a... That was actually a giant hand and a giant gun. That's another thing that he likes to do. Have giant 
props to create different visuals but it's so it could keep ingrid bergman and the the gun and the hand all in focus at the same time and and i mean it's scary it's following her slowly it's scary (laughs) Mm -hmm. and you're like no don't please don't shoot shoot. (laughs) but oh and that the the last the ending of that shot is really really dark it's very then dark. it's like well so yep. she he lets her go she's gone from the room and then now he turns the gun on himself so it's it's the same and shot bam. the gun just and yeah and uh it makes and it feels like uh he shot you the viewer yeah and there's the two frames of red that i didn't notice but at least it did i felt it <laughs> Anyway. No, I, I, you know what I think? I think it would have been more powerful if I didn't see it because that means that I was like so like, like I don't know, just felt it so intensely that I wasn't paying attention. But yeah, I was I was trying to analyze it because I was thinking. I think I was thinking about that scene a lot. Um, uh. Because I was trying to figure out what that dream. I think it's them going through the dream. I'm like, this is such a weird dream. Like I was trying to like figure it out with them. I'm like, how does one conclude this? Oh, like, you were thinking. So I was like, right. I was thro- thrown off by the dream. But no, the scene, the the gun thing was very, yeah. very inter- interesting. I, what he did with yeah. the gun. I always get a little too immersed, so I feel like I'm, I'm yeah. maybe I'm the perfect audience because I'm just yeah, too were. into it. Perf- literally, you're just very like into the, the moment. <laughs> yeah. And he turned the gun around on that. Like, I know. I felt so uneasy. But yeah, that's the entire movie. That is Spellbound. That's the movie. So it was Dr. Murchison. <laughs> it was Dr. Murchison. Um, well, hopefully you enjoyed, you guys enjoyed that half recap, half conversation about the movie. But if, if, yeah. if you did, you can watch the next movie that we'll be talking about. And so that way we won't be spoiling the entire movie the whole time <laughs> what are we watching next sarah what are we watching next oh oh we're watching notorious next yes so please join us for next time and watch notorious and we'll uh we'll see what we come up with for for our next film yeah i think that's okay. it i think that's everything that's it. all right see you guys next time okay bye